the left and the progressives in general have abandoned the ground. Mm. So if there's no truth tellers, period, even if somebody's telling half the truth, they have, it's a, a one-eyed man leading the blind. If nobody's speaking, that person has power. Mm. And that is largely the fault of the people that have abandoned the truth. Yeah. Um, and that is also why we're demonized, because we speak the truth, and that hurts those that don't want to talk about the truth. Um, can, I just, can, I just make after that? can I just make one more point? Have you finished? Sorry. Um, you know, the thing is, I, 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 I still very vehemently disagree because I want to give the example, which I think we'll, we'll understand more together, is this pro-Islamist left. And I'm a communist, so I'm firmly on the left. But I hate this regressive pro-Islamist left. It's a politics of betrayal. It's stabbing us in the back. It's forgotten the left's principles of equality and freedom and secularism, anti-clericalism, anti-religious uh, ideology. That was the banner of the left for, for centuries and centuries. But what I want to say is, there is also a truth in what the, this pro-Islamist left says. U.S. militarism kills. And therefore, they, they support the Islamists because they say U.S. militarism is the worst enemy. So they're speaking half a truth as well. So then they, they have a right also to defend the Islamists. What I want to say is half-truths are actually they have nothing to do with truth. They are there to deceive and dupe and gain and recruit people for their regressive forces. What our role has to be is to say we won't accept any justification for bigotry. Uh, we will not also e excuse any justification for fundamentalism and theocracy. We will stand for our principles of freedom, secularism, and universal rights, full stop. And we want everyone to be on our side. Because if we are going to win, we have to have Muslims, believers, non-believers, people we can't stand. And you can be sure there are lots of people in the ex-Muslim movement who can't stand me. And I don't care. I want to work with you. You know, I've, I've seen YouTube videos of people saying we want to divorce Maryam Namazi. I refuse to divorce you. You know, so, too fucking bad. So, going back to the half-truth of the left perspective, that is why it appeals to a lot of people, because the other side isn't addressing the human rights part of it. So both sides are addressing half of the picture, and that, makes the, they're, that is why they appeal to certain people. Yeah. If the left was committed, if the progressive left was committed to human rights, to civil liberties of Muslims, ex-Muslims, of everybody, as Mariam said, then we wouldn't have this issue to begin with. Um, the things we're talking about are, as you said, have been part of the le uh, progressives for centuries. Yeah, exactly. And the fact that they're abandoning it do you, do you, do you feel they like abandoning it? They have abandoned it. It's not just that they ha are abandoning it. Yeah. Can you? Uh, you wanted to. Yeah, say yeah. <laughs> we should just. The rest of us should just leave. Leave sorry, these guys sorry. to carry yeah. on. Now. <laughs> One more thing. Sorry. Um, no. <laughs> Put it down. <laughs> My turn. <laughs> oh, please. You can talk afterwards. I promise. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I'm trying to be serious, guys. Stop laughing. I know I'm very funny, though. Um, no, so seriously, actually, so it, there's a point in this. So every single one of us that has been harmed, abused, or uh, ostracized, or victimized by somebody, when we come out and speak, we are, like you said, we are telling the truth. The left is accusing us of lying. The exactly. right is exploiting that because the left have left a massive chasm. Yeah. Those that were creating those services, that were dealing with those structural inequalities, that like Ken, Kenan was, I keep calling him Kenan, Kenan, Kenan? Yeah. Kenan. Um, where, uh, so those, those inequalities that haven't been addressed, challenged, and you know, dealt with head on by the left, the, the far right, it's not even the right, it's the far right that are coming in and, mm -hmm. and honing in on them. We've got um, beautiful Lely over there. He's become very, very public um, recently and he's, you know, uh, being very vocal at the moment. So he's had Britain first several times come and ask him if he would join them because I've got lots of ex-Muslims that, wo that work with us. But why? because there's nobody else willing to speak for them. The left has completely abandoned them. Every single political party, I mean, I am politically homeless at the moment. I used to be a lefty. I can't stand them anymore. Um, uh, but I do feel politically homeless now, very much so. 
But then also the issue of harmful traditional practices. So that's my background, my professional background, the sexual violence issue that I've already touched on. So nobody was talking about the young girls that were being groomed. Can you blame people for being drawn to the people that are going to speak about these issues? Um, now, we, we shouldn't stop talking about them because there's that risk. You know, um, you know. recently there was a milkshaking. Do we all stop drinking milkshake now just in case somebody misuses that? But no, what we do is we talk about that issue and address it head on. All of a sudden we've got, we've got UKIP talking about FGM. They've never given a shit about FGM, but they know for a fact it's the same, that the, yeah. left, the left in Britain right now, we have got pro-FGM campaigners people supporting FGM in Britain right now, very vocally saying, this is part of my culture, and you are Islamophobic for even challenging this. That's happening right now in Britain. 1985, it was outlawed in Britain. And all of that hard work done by activists before it was outlawed, and since, because bear in mind, we've only had one conviction in the UK still, and now we've, now because of this dancing around actual truths, by the left, we have, we have pro-FGM campaigners in, in the UK. And then we have the far right saying that we, we are the spokespeople for victims of FGM because the left have abandoned them. That's disgusting. Can you not comment? You need uh, political parties, you need uh, politicians. How do you and uh, how can you convince them that you need their help? But I, because I don't think you, 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 uh, the help from uh, the alt right is needed at this moment. No. But you need help from. Can you tell me something? Can you tell me uh, what uh, uh, we can do? Because I have the same feeling, and it's the same discussion also here in the Netherlands, we were talking about it. They, well, they, if they don't want to listen to us activists, yeah, if yeah, we're too in their face and too controversial, at least listen to the victims. But you are victims. not an activist. You work with these women. You work uh, with... Um, and, 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 and we're frontline professionals. I, I know. We are frontline yes, professionals. But on, in both sense, you know, in terms of harmful traditional practices, but in terms of ex-Muslims as well. We support hundreds yeah. per month. Listen to us. If they, they don't want to listen to us, they think we're too brazen, yeah. because, you know, a, a gobby woman is too scary for politicians quite often. Listen to the victims. We can line up thousands of victims, but they don't want to listen to them either because the victims aren't going to give them the funds that they need to carry on. It, it, this is a money game, really. In, in the UK, you have uh, the Conservatives who are in bed with the Saudis. You have the Labour Party that's in bed with the, uh, the Iranians. I mean, um, I'm going to disagree with Saudi as well, just because <laughs> we're having fun. We're having fun, matter. and we love each other, even I though know. we disagree each other. And look, you can disagree with people without chopping their heads off. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So, yeah. so um, you know, I, I'm, I'm just an old lefty, you know, and I'm old, so I guess maybe that's my problem, I don't know. Uh, but I think also identity politics has warped a lot of um, our, our politics, you know. It's become, and, and I think it, it seeps into everything. It does seep into everything. I mean, I think that, yes, there is the pro-Islamist left that is the politics of betrayal, but I, I see the left everywhere, to be honest, and I think it is really very much alive in the 99% movement, in, you know, protests in front of Wall Street, in the unveiling movement in Iran, in the revolutions uh, in the Arab Spring, for example, uh, you know, this demand for secularism, this demand for universal rights, uh, the demand for an end to religion's role in the, in the public space. So I do see those very much as the left being alive, uh, not necessarily in these sort of mainstream political parties, but we're, we're in a new era now anyway, where, you know, we're seeing changes in, in, in things that were completely deemed you know, normal in the past. So I do really think that it is the left. There's this uh, uh, great Iranian Marxist, Mansur Hekmat, who I love, um, who said that, uh, you know, people seek the left because they seek justice. And, and I think, I, I strongly, strongly believe in that. And I think that, um, I, I, do, I do think that 
uh, you know, we do have to move away from identity politics. It is dangerous. And I think also listening to victims is not necessarily enough because we know victims that want Sharia law. We know victims that want uh, to wear the burqa, you know. And so I think, uh, you know, if we, I think Keenan Malik uh, talked uh, about some of it. We've had a lot of speakers here talk about some of the ways forward. And I think progressive politics is the way forward, that we join hands with each other, irrespective of our differences and background, because in the end, we are all human. Mm -hmm. And in the end, we all fundamentally want to live with dignity and with rights and in free societies. I mean, look, the reality is that no matter how many times you tell me that Muslims are like this and ex-Muslims are, are, are different, yeah. the reality is that all those people who are fleeing and trying to reach <coughs> Europe, they're coming from societies where uh, you know, they're considered Muslims. The vast majority of refugees are Muslims. Yes. And so many of them, uh, you know, of course, that's not to say no one is regressive. Of course, they're regressives in the West. Uh, they're white regressives, they're brown regressives, but that you know, a vast majority of people just want to live free and that we really need to somehow move beyond the sort of identity politics if we're gonna win. We are facing a rise of fascism. You know, um, Yasmin talked about it, Gita talked about it, uh, Rahila talked about it, Keenan talked about uh, it from a different perspective. I think we really need to think about how we're gonna save ourselves uh, and uh, you know, the, the world for our future generation. I've got a son. I I want this world to be a better place for him. You know, so we really need to think about that. Can you, 